Hi, this is Richard Robbins with my 60K store. Now that you have your store all ready to go, you've got design in place, you've got your SSL certificate that you're going to use, you have figured out how to make your info pages that make your site look legitimate, all of that stuff. Let's take a look at the site structure that you want to use. The diagram you see here is a layout that I've used for almost all of my websites, and I'll go through the different elements on here and describe to you how I set this up. First of all, you have your home page. Your home page is where a good portion of your traffic will go. Many of your returning customers will go there to begin shopping on your site. This is the resources section of your site. These pages that you publish here will be educational resources or something that describes your products, gives context and background or technical documentation on how the products work. These will be valuable resources for both your customers and also just anyone who visits your site. And this is a good opportunity to bring in search engine ranking authority as well as to use as landing pages for promotionals that you're doing through social media and other online marketing channels. These here again are your info pages. This is the About Us page, the Contact Us page, the Order Fulfillment, Shipping Returns page. Also you have your shopping cart. These pages are all link to from the home page. The shopping cart page will actually be built into your shopping cart system. So you won't have to necessarily create that page from scratch, but you may want to tweak it to optimize it so that more people will check out. And the navigation and also on your home page in general, you'll have your categories. This is the way that you have organized your products. So you've got some categories. These categories will also have product pages underneath them, as well as other categories, subcategories. And those subcategories will have products underneath them as well. All of these boxes here represent products, which are ultimately the pages that we are trying to push our web visitors to because that's where we make our money is when they go to these pages, when they decide to buy something, and when they check out. Over here we have our blog. This is a consistently updated part of our website where we are going to be adding interesting articles on topics that are related to the things that we're selling in our store. You can see the interlinking system that goes on here. The home page will link to the resources, to our categories, to our info pages, to our blog, and even to some of our products in our subcategory pages. Our resources pages will be linking into our subcategories. They'll also link to our product pages and other sections of our site. Our blog, similarly, will have links coming from different articles we post there into our products, as well as we'll link into categories and probably even back over to resources, whatever that's called for. I'm going to show you a graphic here that will help you understand why it is that we want to set up our site this way. We're trying to get maximum exposure for, especially for our product pages. This right here is a graphic that describes link juice. The term link juice is used in a search engine optimization context because link juice is what is necessary for any individual page to rank in the search engines. If you consider a farm analogy that I have used in the past, if any one of these pages represents seeds that you've planted in your farm, those seeds cannot grow no matter how great the seed is unless they are watered. And In this case with search engine optimization, those seeds must be watered through link juice. Now you can pass in link juice uh, from other sites that link to, in this case for instance your home page, is also linking into some of your internal pages like your categories. You can also distribute the link juice throughout your site based on how the linking is done between the different pages on your site. And that's what we want to keep in mind as we are looking at the structure of our website. Ultimately you're going to have hundreds if not thousands of these products pages and we don't want any of these things to get lost in the shuffle. Meaning that we don't want to have any of these orphaned or stuck out there to where they're not getting any sort of link juice going to them. If we look at what Moz recommends for site architecture, we can see a concept here that's useful to understand. This box represents authority and it, it goes down the further internal to the site that you get. So in this particular diagram you have these pages here that are one, two, three, four, five, six clicks away from the home page. The most authoritative page for a website is typically the home page. And the further you get down into the website, as you have to drill down from the home page, the more authority you lose. And in this case, these pages that are down here may be so far away from the home page, and if they don't have other links coming from external sites, 
then ultimately what happens is they don't even have a chance for Google to index them because Google sees them as not very important pages. If you look at this architecture instead, this is closer to what I've shown you with my own site architecture diagram. If these are product pages here, they're only one, two, three clicks away from the home page. And so it's like watering your farm and making sure that the water trickles down from its source to the elements that need it to, in order to be able to thrive. That is how we're going to set up our website. That's the architecture we're going to use to make sure that every single page on a website has ample opportunity to rank high in the search engines and also that the site is coherent, it integrates well, and provides a good shopping experience for the people that visit our store. Let's walk through a little example of how this website structure would roll out. This example is for OnlineSafetyDepot.com. I'll show you one of the products that I sell. It is this hook with ANSI gate. It's a kind of carabiner. That's what it's under here is Liberty Mountain is a manufacturer. That's a carabiner that they make. The product description here shows that this product meets these two standards, a CEEN362 and an ANSI Z359. I don't know what these two standards are exactly, but I'm pretty sure that I can use this information to help me market this product. The strategy here is to publish a product page on our site that advertises this product and also to publish some pages that provide technical support and resources that are related to the product. If we go back to our diagram here, we can publish that product under one category that we'd call fall protection equipment. And under the fall protection equipment category, there would be subcategories including fall protection carabiners. We can publish this carabiner in each of those different categories. Then we can, under our resources section, publish a page about ANSI Z359.107. We can explain why it's important for safety standards and what it applies to. We'll have to do a little bit of research on what that is and be able to write an article that is engaging and useful. Also over here, I just did a search on Google for, I'll go back and show you the search, I just did a search for construction worker fall, and I see this article published about three hours ago from the Sioux City Journal that says that a construction worker was injured in the fall and he's in critical condition, and it mentions in here that his safety harness failed. And so on my blog, I can actually go and I can write a summary of what happened in this case. I can explain what causes safety harnesses to fail, and I can include any other information there that would be useful for people in the safety industry. And I can provide a link from that article over here to my carabiner page. But you can see here then how these all fit together. You have a, a product you're trying to promote. You have two different categories that stand, serve as landing pages for that product, or which give people access to that product. And you also have a resources page that sends people to that product and you also have a blog article that will send visits to that product as well. This is a strategy that I repeat over and over and over again. It's worked really well for me in the past and I expect it also to continue to work well as I build out OnlineSafetyDepot.com and CustomBattleDecor.com.